and a first degree black belt in Jiu Jitsu and I'm currently associated with Silver Strand Dojo International. I've been associated with them for many many years. It's been a good experience. Uh, I've studied the martial arts for almost 30 years now and it's done me a lot of good. I'm a painter as you can see and when I when you paint when you start off painting you start off with a, a blank white canvas and there's nothing on there and it's up to the painter to make the work evolve. And it's the same thing when you're a martial arts teacher. The beginning student is like a blank canvas and it's your responsibility to see that you teach him in the right way and you, and you form the correct habits. Uh, my teaching philosophy is kind of based around two different things. The first thing is the term martial arts. If you, if you look at the term martial arts, um, martial means warlike. And then you got the art part. And so the root of it is the start of, of, of the martial arts had to do with the resolution of or dealing with violence or dealing with conflict. And so the first part of it is warlike, the warlike arts, the art of fighting. And so it's not like the art of painting, it's different, it's the art of fighting. When I get a student, I want to make sure, I think it's in self-defense terms as in uh, dealing with violence or the warlike part is that I don't want to skip right to the art part right off the bat. I want to make sure they get to the root of the martial arts, which is how are you going to conduct yourself when faced with violence or with a threat of violence or with some type of a threat. And I, lay, I like to lay that foundation down first, maybe for a couple of years. I'm more interested in my students having enough defensive skills to just get away. We're not teaching, the difference between self-defense and like sport fighting is we're not worried about winning. We're worried about surviving. We're worried about just, we want to get away. We want to have enough defense where we can get away. I've been studying this stuff for years, but there's people out there I just want to get away from. That self-defense is like a 90% 90, 90 mental thing. Um, it's a mental attitude, and it's an attitude that a lot of people that come into the dojo uh, really don't have to start off with. It's a streetwise attitude. It's an attitude of survival. If you look at a if you look at violent events or events of aggression, they're just like all the other events in our lives where they, <clears throat> excuse me, where they start, they have a beginning, they have a middle, and they have an ending. A violent incident has those three things. It's going gonna, it's gonna to have a beginning, a start, and it's going to have a middle, and then there's going to be an ending one way or the other. And what I like to teach my students is the more you can be aware of something's going on at the beginning. The closer you can, can time your actions or start your actions or your reaction to what is happening at the beginning of that event, the better your chances are. If you wait as things progress on and on and on, your options narrow. But at the beginning, if you can win the battle without even fighting, that's like the highest, supposed to be like one of the highest levels of the art. You see something coming, you dodge it or you see some kind of violence or aggression developing, you nip it in the bud one way or the other. And so that's an important thing that I like to my students to, to get that attitude and also the one that, that's going to help them to survive and, and some basic physical techniques such as basic punching, basic groundwork, basic blocking, basic defense against weapons. The second part of my teaching philosophy is uh, each person, each student is an individual. And I'm kind of against the, the uh, martial arts schools that, that teach kind of cookie cutter. Each student's the same, they teach them the same thing. I look at a student as an individual that comes in, you've got some people that are weak, some people that are strong. We have some people that are like professional athletes, and we have 
We've had blind people before. You wouldn't teach those two types the same way. Uh, each person has their own life experiences that they bring. They have their own physical attributes or their physical weaknesses. Um, they have their mental attitudes. And so you have to kind of, your job as a teacher is to figure out what is the best way, what is the best approach to teach that person. If I have a person that's really weak, I'm going to need to make them stronger. If I have a person that's already very strong, I need to make them gentler. Fifteen years ago, Shihan Silverstrand, myself, Sensei Olson, um, and several other people, we had an amazing class. It was uh, it was held every week on a Friday night, and on, it was on invitation only. And about there were about 10, 15 people in it, and it was a very, very practical class. And it it had to do with exploring different possibilities, basically sitting around. Uh, self-defense and that sort of thing and we, we would explore just about anything I think back then we were a little bit ahead of our time we were doing some ground fighting and we were doing some other stuff but one of the things that we one of the things that we dabbled in at that time was was the cane and this is a cane that's made specifically for fighting it's made out of hardwood and we dabbled around with that and played with that for about a year or so and then we went on to other things but I fell in love with the cane because of, because of uh, the practicality of it, because you can carry it anywhere you want. Uh, it's not noticeable as a weapon, and it's a non-lethal weapon. You're probably not really going to hurt anybody really, really bad with it. And so, ever since then, I've been working on this form just to try to figure out uh, some of the things you could do with it. There's other people that do a lot fancier things than I do. They do a lot of locks, joint locks and stuff, and they're a lot more advanced. This is basically, uh, for me, it's basically a stick in disguise and with a hook on the end of it. And there's other people that can do some things with it that, that are really amazing. I don't know if, if it would take a lot of practice to get so where you could really make that work. But anyway, a lot of the moves are, some of the moves that you'll see in this kata, I did uh, formulate and did you might say steal from that class. Some of them are from that class and I wanted to remember.